we are aware that on We are discussing about uh, Mughal Sultanate now. You are aware that Babur established Mughal Sultanate in North India. Particularly he was there in North India for four years. The important battle he fought, that is number one obviously, I should take the name of Panipat that is between Babur and Ibrahim Khan Dodi. Uh, then it was Battle of Khanwa, that is Babur and uh, Confederation formed by Rajput under the leadership of Rana Sangh. Then of course Babur conquered vast part of North India, but not entire. Now, uh, actually he got very less years and fortunately to consolidate his empire. Whatever empire was there, that was scattered out. It was not under direct control of Babur. Yet, law and order establishment was not there by Babur in North India. He was just facing out various problems. Now see, uh, particularly uh, North Indian politics, if you want to understand at this level, this means what? Uh, at Mughal establishment, then the, there was actually anarchy condition. When Khiljis were ruling, they were having strong hold on the kingdom. But after fall of Khiljis, centralized power started weakening off. And uh, rather than religion, racial problems started arriving. So for example, you are aware that all these rulers were Muslims by their religion. Some of them were Shia, uh, very few rather, but many of them were Sunni. Shia and Sunni uh, that, uh, problems were there in uh, ruling parties. But apart from that, who is the ruler? So for example, Ibrahim Khan Lodi was also Muslim. Babur was also Muslim, but Babur was outsider, whereas Ibrahim Khan Lodi no doubt, if you are considering Afghanistan as part of India at that time, then was Indian one. And therefore, Ibrahim Khan Lodi and Babur uh, battle. When Babur won that battle, that means what? Outsider is getting victory over insider. At that time, people were having knowledge. Unfortunately, today's few people, they don't realize. But in those days, they were having knowledge that Babur is outsider, he is Mongol and he is ruling over India or trying to rule over India and so Pathans in those days opposed him to greater extent. Babur was fighting out various battles against Pathan whereas Babur was facing another problem this was a religious one that was Rajputs no doubt I am saying Rajputs but they were Hindus so war was there between one way Hindu and Muslim and second way between Mughals and Pathans. Whereas many times Hindus, that means Rajputs, united with Pathans and faced problem for Mughals. Because Mughals were basically newly arrived outsiders and therefore they opposed Babur to greater extent. Babur was not friendly with India. It is said that Babur was having very good human values. He was not uh, something like Mongol invader. He was having good human values and all that it is said. But yet certain things he was practicing out that is somewhat resembling to Hunic practices. Say so for example you are aware that Hun people they were after killing of man they were removing their skull and drinking out <coughs> liquor from that. And one night, one skull was used. Now, Babar was not that cruel. But still, making towers of heads was common practice in uh, this Mongol invading process. So the one who was defeated 
and lost out their life. They were cutting out their heads and making tower of their heads. Just imagine the way Mongols were treating people of here. Their oppositions, means Mongol oppositions, were not only Hindus, but Muslims were also their opponents. Say for example, Pathans and Mughals were having rivalry only. And that's why the India was facing tremendous problem during Babur's rule. The most important thing Babur carried out, that is, his officer who looks after military affairs, that is called as Mir Bakshi, was ordered to destroy Ram Temple, that is called as Rama Janbo Bhumi, which is present day most important issue in Indian politics that arrived from that point. Now, uh, you are aware that High Court given decision that there is no evidence that temple was destroyed and mosque is constructed. Like that decision was given by High Court. But uh, many of us believe that uh, why, if at all you have to construct mosque, mosque then why at that place only? Why not other place? India is large territory. North Indian plains are vast. So if at all you have to construct mosque, then you can construct somewhere else. But that was constructed at that point. And so, uh, whatever that matter, that is in court, I should not talk of that. But the thing is that, uh, it is said that Mir Bakshi was ordered to construct a mosque over there. Now, Babur spread out in North India, but not able to get complete rule over Northern India. The chief, usually they were Afghans. Why they were Afghans? Because they were actually set out by Lodhi dynasty. And therefore, many Subhedas were Afghans. They accepted suzerainty of Babur. Because Babur was having more military strength, more military power. But on turning out his attention, they started rebelling. And so no perfect law and order was established during uh, North India, uh, during Babur's rule. At death of Babur, Humayun became a new ruler. And uh, no doubt uh, in their language, Humayun, that means the lucky person. And uh, he proved to be unlucky rather than lucky. Name was Humayun. Because uh, he was having various problems in front of him. Uh, him. There were different rivalry. First he has to overcome. <coughs> Babur left behind comparatively vast empire, North Indian empire. But Babur was having problems. Uh, sorry, Humayun was having problems. Say for example, all these Afghan rulers were having, uh, say they were not ready to accept Humayun's suzerainty. Rajputs were thinking of opportunity again to defeat out Humayun and throw back Mughal rule over India. Whereas uh, Humayun himself was having problem from his home only. Babur was having another son named as Askari, Kamran, Kambaksha, like that names are there of their uh, brothers. Humayun was the eldest one, but was opposed by this internal, that is family affair also. And so Humayun was having a great task to do. Number one, consolidate his empire, you have to crush down all rivals, establish law and order, establish new system of ruling, as well as we have to, uh, he has to overcome uh, his own brothers, because they will continuously fight for supremacy and getting power in their hand. And unfortunate to say from his side that he was having failure in each and every task. He started first consolidating his empire. Afghans were proved rebellant. Sher Shah Hasuri, his name of ruler, 
who opposed him long. Whereas when Humayun marched towards him, he was defeated. But after defeat, just he released him on the terms that he should accept his suzerainty. Even uh, Humayun's brother were released, rescued on the term that they should accept his suzerainty. No firm dealing like in latter phase, Aurangzeb carried out with his brothers. That was carried out by Humayun. Humayun was literally a liberal man. Uh, if I am talking human values, then Humayun was perfect. But for ruler and particularly in medieval parts of India, this type of liberal values were not respected. Humayun marched towards rebellant Subhedar of Gujarat. I managed to defeat him. But on turning Humayun's attention, he again rebelled. Till that, Humayun was facing problem from Sher Shah Suri. And ultimately, uh, with certain Rajputs, he was not able to deal. And ultimately, Humayun lost out the throne of Delhi. From Delhi, he marched towards Afghanistan via Baluchistan and Sindh territory. On that journey, he got married again. Already there were many marriages of Humayun, but he got married with a daughter of Sufi Saint. That was just 14 years old at that time. And from that daughter of Sufi Saint, he got a son in desert of Baluchistan. There was birth of this son. His name is Akbar. He is famous in history as Akbar the Great. Then he ultimately fled to Iran. Or in those days it was called as Persia. So he went to Persia. Till that India was ruled by a Pathan or Afghan ruler named as Sher Shah Suri. Humayun went to Iran while his son Akbar he was around 2 years old he was taken as captive by his own brother in Afghanistan and over the period of 2 and a half years a small Akbar was there uh, in hands of his uncle now uh, Humayun went to Iran and with help of Emperor of Iran, he again started marching towards India. This way, a first phase in Humayun's life is end over here. Humayun, in return, that means he was helped by Shah of Iran, and it is written in some books that he accepted Shia. So he converted from Sunni to Shia to get help. Maybe possible this is diplomacy shown by Humayun. But he converted into Shia after uh, to get help of Iran. Till that, Sher Shah Suri was ruling over India. Total five years was controlled by Sher Shah Suri. And uh, he was Afghan ruler of India. And I should give maximum uh, say vantage, not only I should, uh, actually historians are giving this to Sher Shah Suri for <coughs> administrative setup in India that was developed by Sher Shah Suri. After Sher Shah Suri, Mughals continued to uh, work with Sher Shah Suri's administration work only. Sher Shah Suri is responsible for introduction of currency in Indian uh, government that is called as Rupaya. A Sanskrit word is there Raupya. Raupya means silver. Corrupted word is there Rupaya. So this way Rupaya was introduced by Sher Shah Suri and we are aware that we are having lot of love with this currency today also. So that currency started by 
Shah Suri. Originally, we can say, prior to him, various coins were there. Uh, coins were made up of different alloys. They were also there. Even golden coins, as we discussed in earlier phase, that during Gupta rule, they were having golden coins also. But uh, predominantly, this silver coin was introduced here, and uh, it is given in book. It is called as Rupaya that was introduced by Sher Shah Sui. In Indian map, if you observe Bengal territory, Bengal territory is towards mouth of river Ganga and uh, Brahmaputra. Extreme plain land, horizontal land, and very, very highly fertile land. Along with that, a good in handicraft and all that work. Just beside, there is Jharkhand land, Chota Nakur plateau, rich of minerals. And therefore, Bengal proved the richest part. Because of trade also, they were having fantastic development. Usually, we observe that during any rule, say it is of Allahuddin Khilji, it is of Malik Kahur or some else, Bengal territory proved rebellion. For central government, Bengal territory was giving again and again rebellion. In order to avoid that, Sher Shah Suri split out Bengal into three different provinces. Each province was appointed a separate ruler, separate subedar, and usually care was taken that these three subedars should have rivalry with each other. And therefore, no revelation was there from Bengal henceforth. So that's when Sher Shah Suri managed to solve the problem of Bengal territory. Sher Shah Suri established a system that is called as Mansabdari system and Jahagi. We are going to discuss in later lectures about this all administrative setup. But what are the drawbacks of Ikta system? Most of them were overcome by Mansabdari system. So for that purpose also Sher Shah Suri is responsible. He ruled here for five years. And then onwards, again, India started facing the problems of outsiders attack that outsider was Humayun. Humayun started marching towards India with Persian army for his help. And then again there was battle and ultimately Humayun proved victorious one. Delhi was controlled by Humayun. This Afghan dominancy over Delhi uh, left out completely and Humayun <coughs> started managing his empire once again. Over the period of one and a half year, Humayun established himself in Delhi Sultan. He regained various parts of his empire under his control. But uh, as I am saying again that his name, that is the lucky one, proved to be unlucky for him, he again lost out his life only. It was said that he was there on terrace and suddenly uh, uh, he heard that there is Ajan, Ajan means what? The call for uh, prayer and in that he was getting downstairs and unfortunately uh, he fall down there and died. Uh, he was just 48 years old at his death, leaving behind a 14 year son, Akbar. In initial status, Akbar lost out. Akbar means what actually Akbar was not actually that capable at that time. Uh, he was having his maternal uncle named as Bairam Khan. Some books are mentioning Bairam Khan, but its name is Behram Khan. So Behram Khan was there. Behram Khan and all Akbar and all that, they lost out actually daily under a Hindu general from Sher Shah Suri's rule that was called as Hemu. And then Hemu fought a battle 
at Panipat again. Whereas Behram Khan was actually leader. But in bracket we have to write down Akbar. This is called as second battle of Panipat. Where Behram Khan was the victorious one. Hemu was beheaded by Behram Khan. And ultimately Akbar was installed on the elite throne. Now this way a new ruler over Delhi Sultanate was there that is named as Akbar. In initial stages Akbar was not actually ruling. He was ruled uh, or rather the rule was there under head of Behram Khan. There was dispute between Behram Khan and Akbar. And then Akbar was sent, uh, sorry, Behram Khan was sent by Akbar for Hajj pilgrimage. And uh, in deserts of Baluchistan somewhere, Behram Khan was executed by robbers or something like that, it is said. But the you know, important thing is that Behram Khan uh, was right now no control over Indian politics, and Indian politics was taken completely in hands of Akbar. Akbar is the most important person in Mughal dynasty. Supposed to be, I should say, that all over India spread Mughal Empire or almost vast territory of Indian Empire was under his control. That is the most important thing that this foundation of empire was laid by Akbar and not Babur. Say, Babur entered, Babur managed a control for over a period of 4-5 years. But after that, Humayun lost out. Humayun re-controlled and lost out. Whereas Akbar laid a foundation and then onwards, uh, till Maratha arrival, this Mughal foundation or Mughal rule was there on Delhi Sultanate. No doubt I am saying Delhi Sultanate, but soon after, Akbar changed out his capital from Delhi to a city named as Fatehpur Shikri that was specially constructed by Akbar. Akbar uh, fought with various local Afghan chiefs. Now, uh, from Babur onwards, if you observe history, then Babur as well as Humayun were having continuous war-like phases. The wars were with either Rajputs or with Afghan. Rajputs were claiming the throne of Delhi, Pathans or Afghans were claiming the throne of Delhi and Mughals were claiming the throne of Delhi. And in order to solve this continuous problem, Akbar carried out a diplomacy. Akbar established good terms with Rajput people. Basically, Rajputs were Hindus. Akbar uh, took here a liberal policy. No, no, Akbar was Islamic. He was Muslim. But he was, uh, as a ruler, he accepted a liberal policy diplomatically. Akbar uh, established matrimonial relationships with various Rajput kings also. Akbar abolished pilgrimage tax and like that he started favoring Hindus and therefore Rajputs also started supporting Akbar. In Akbar's rule, the popularity of emperor was so high that there was a separate window in the palace of Akbar's uh, palace whereas Akbar used to go there and address his peoples whereas <coughs> whereas Hindus uh, or say those who are their natives of Delhi they used to stand there and wait for Akbar to come in that window. After observing Akbar there, these people used to go to their houses for their lunch. 
just imagine these people were called as darshani that was the height we can say or uh, we can say popularity was gained by akbar but akbar was say religiously he was tolerant but he was also having certain mongol traditions in his mind say for example when he fought the battle at chitorgarh he initially fought battle at chitorgarh for conquering that fort now say when i am talking of alauddin khilji at that time cannons and cannon balls were not in practice but now akbar was having very good artillery basically uh, he constructed a tower a uh, say tower of mud or something like that that was having almost equal height to that of chitorgarh and from that he bombarded cannon balls and he got victory he destroyed various temples in chitorgarh he executed rana udaya singh and also it is said that he constructed towers of heads of the people who slaughtered or killed in the battle this way akbar established same thing akbar spread out his empire uh, almost all the parts of rajputana were in hands of akbar local chieftains accepted suzerainty of akbar and akbar spread all over north india he ruled for many years and now he decided to conquer south parts of india over this is western ghat in divided eastern ghat satpura range vindhya range girnar arauli rajmahal hills here is some their location of delhi from delhi he extended his power over rajasthan but here somewhere udaipur is there or chitorgarh near by that so he was not able to get control over empire entire empire of rana udaya singh his son that is maharana pratap continued the battle with akbar ultimately rana pratap lost out battle of haldi ghat but still he continued to oppose akbar other rajput kings simply surrendered akbar they accepted suzerainty of akbar in turn akbar was there to get protect uh, sorry protection for these rajput people in akbar court these rajput kings were having their own throne and they were able to sit in front of akbar that was initial stage then onwards akbar decided to penetrate in southern parts of india even he crossed out vindhya range and then he reached till satpura range in this satpura range there is a fort named as burhanpur or uh, there is a place named as burhanpur just some 20 kilometers away from burhanpur there is a place named as ashirgarh or that is called as the most important fort in this range because from coming from delhi to maharashtra this fort is important akbar conquered this fort and said now doors of south india are open for me he set out his base camp here just to the north of sapura range that base camp this place that is called as burhanpur a marvelous city to observe he was there at burhanpur mogal base camp was set and then he started entering in south india so this way we discuss about rajput uh, about akbar of surun that means akbar established his kingdom first uh, no doubt it was under the name of bairam khan but then onwards akbar spread out all over north india except here chitorgarh and nearby territory where raja uh, rana uh, maharana pratap was there but 
rest of many territories were under his direct control. South India at this time was divided into pieces. You are aware it was uh, this South Indian part, there was Vijayanagar Hindu Empire. Towards north, that means here in Deccan territory, there was Nijam Shah, there was Adil Shah and there was Kutub Shah. So all these uh, rulers were there. Now initially, Akbar started struggling with Nijam Shah. We were just towards south of Sapura range, there was rule of Nijam Shah. As we discussed earlier, that Nijam Shah was indigenous. He was originally Brahman from Vijayanagar's empire, but he was converted to Islam. Uh, he was taken as captive and then converted to Islam. And then onwards, their dynasty was ruling over this territory for many years. So he was Muslim, but Indian Muslim, whereas Akbar, 50% at least I should say, uh, was of Mongol race. Why 50%? Because his mother was Sindhi Muslim, a saint, a Sufi saint's daughter, whereas his father was human. This Akbar versus Nijam Shah battle started out. Akbar got success after strong resistance by Nijam Shah. Akbar was not able to defeat entire Nijam Shahi kingdom. Akbar was able to manage the victory over Ahmad Nagar, the capital of Nijam Shah. But Nijam Shah shifted out capital from now Ahmad Nagar to Fort Devgiri. That was called as Daulatabad now because Muhammad Tughlaq named this as Daulatabad. So he shifted his capital from Ahmad Nagar to Daulatabad and continued resistance. Akbar managed a victory after eight years, but he was not able to conquer entire Nijam Shahi kingdom. Whereas Yet, to the south, here, towards Andhra Pradesh and Telangana side, there was Kutub Shahi Kingdom and here there was Adil Shahi Kingdom. They were far away from him. After eight years, he returned back to North Indian politics again. Akbar ruled for nearly 40 years. In history, or particularly in this phase of history, uh, it was very difficult for a ruler to rule for so prolonged period. That is of 40 years. Just check out Humayun losing again and again. He got uh, coronation somewhere around 23 years old when he was 23 years old and he died out at 48 years old. Akbar, uh, sorry, Babur got power in India and ruled for only four and a half years. Whereas comparatively Akbar was having very long rule in those days. Akbar established and continued the reforms given by Behram Khan, uh, sorry, given by Sher Shah Suri only. And that's why when we are discussing about Mughal administration, the administration given by Sher Shah Suri was just little bit modified by Akbar, otherwise it was continued. The systems and all that were continued by Akbar. Akbar was said to have nine gems in the court. One of them was Tansin. He was patron of music. Another one you are aware that is a famous person named as Birbal. But some historians are saying that Birbal was not a wise man in his court. Birbal was name of only a king. Rajput king was there who surrendered himself and he died in the battle of Kabul because Kabul throne or Kabul side was not again under direct control of Mughals. There was problem. Persians were claiming on Kabul and the issue of Kabul just now began. Now this way Akbar was having its, uh, his empire's border extended from Kabul Kandahar to south side till Maharashtra and east side towards Bengal. A vast consolidated empire was there during the rule of Akbar. Akbar was uh, having religious matter, discussion on religious matter also and that's why he was tolerant. Uh, it is said that he was tolerant to all religion. 
he established a city near my Delhi that is called as Fatehpur Shikri where he constructed mosques, he constructed palaces as well as other important places there that is called as Ibadat Khana that is a hall where we can discuss about God not only Muslim God but various uh, scholars can come there and carry out discussion about that and ultimately all this discussion turned him to establish a religion which is famous as Deen e Ilahi but its name, original name is not Deen e Ilahi the religion is having name as uh, Tawheed e Ilahi Later on, this religion is famous as Deen e Ilahi Ilahi means of God or E means of and Deen means religion so religion of God Akbar proclaimed himself as a prophet of this religion This religion was getting different ideas from different religions and forming the mixture of that This religion flourished out during Akbar's rule and later on slowly vanished out also because uh, Muslims particularly Mullah and Maulavi they were not uh, actually happy with Akbar's rule as Akbar was not following certain Islamic principle keep in mind according to Islam Prophet Muhammad is last prophet sent by God on this earth after Prophet Muhammad, nobody should claim as Prophet according to Islam whereas uh, Akbar proclaimed himself as a Prophet of this religion that is Deen e Ilahi or Tawheed e Ilahi Now, Akbar uh, established this all Akbar was having various problems out of that the important problem Akbar was not having his own son and whereas uh, it is said that he got blessings from a Sufi saint that is Khaja Salim Chishti and therefore uh, he named his son as Salim so this way Salim is the next ruler supposed to be of Delhi Sultan but as Akbar was engaged in wars uh, continuously because he was engaged in wars with Rajput he was engaged in war with Nijam Shah and all that it is said that Salim was having habit of consuming liquor from childhood only some books are mentioning that he was under influence of liquor after 8 years old and like that later on at old age of Akbar, this Salim only rebelled against him and Mughal Sultanate observed a new situation that son is rebelling against his father and like that things happened ultimately Akbar managed to defeat Salim uh, but the important thing is that Mughal prince rebelled against Mughal emperor this situation happened during Akbar 